What up? That's a peace sign. What up? That's what's up. My name's Tyler, and we're gonna learn some math, boy. Okay, or girl. I don't know why I said it weird. Okay, so what I'll look at today is something from algebra. It's called using formulas, okay? So what we're gonna work on is just how to use a basic formula, okay? I think a good one to use is one that we use with rectangles, all right? Main thing about rectangles, four sides, all 90 degree angles, opposite sides of equal length. You got yourself a rectangle, and everything's 90 degrees inside there. I think I already said that. If I said it again, I had to double up. Sometimes you got to double up, back to back homers. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so let's say we got a rectangle right here. All right, a formula that you'll use with rectangles is called perimeter, okay? Let's say you've got the perimeter of your rectangle. You've got your length, you've got your width, your perimeter is the distance around it. Um, a common problem you'll see whenever you work on um, rectangles and they do perimeter is a fence. Okay, if you've got a fenced-in backyard that's in a just a, a rectangle, the perimeter is the fence. Okay, that's the distance of that line. Okay, you're not finding all this in here. You're finding just the length of this, as if you like we're a giant, like the Hulk. <laughs> Topical. You got it. You broke it, stretched it out, and then you found the length of it. Okay? Now, to find the perimeter, you could add up this width plus this length plus this width plus this length. Okay? But we could also use something called a formula. Now, we are having two lengths, so what's a shortcut for saying you're going to add up two lengths together? Lengths together. Two times the length. That would find the measure of this and this, right? Now, what would I do to find my two widths? We know these are going to be the same length, so I could just do two times the width. Now, what am I going to do with those numbers and those numbers to find the total number? I'm going to add those two together, and that's going to equal my perimeter, okay? So right here, we've got the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle, okay? This is the formula. Um, as you go through all your secondary math classes and probably some of your math classes you've already had, you're going to see a lot of formulas, okay? Some will be attached to shapes, like when you do a lot of geometry stuff. Some are just going to be formulas. Um, 2x plus 3 equals 12. It's a formula, okay? It, it, formulas are things you use to find an answer. Most often you'll use formulas with relation to something real, okay? Something that's like doing a word problem or something that's working something out for you, okay? So that's a formula. Okay, so you know what a formula is. Let's use our example formula, which is the perimeter of a rectangle, and let's solve a couple easy ones, okay? Let's say we've got, um, let's say we want to find the perimeter and area of each rectangle, okay? We'll start with the perimeter because that's the formula I've given you. All right, let's say this is 7 inches and this is um, 15 inches, okay? Not too bad. All right, let's say we want to find the perimeter, okay? We use our formula to find the perimeter. I know this measure right here is my width. I know this measure right here is my length. So what I do in a formula is I take those numbers and I replace them with wherever that letter is. So for instance, in this formula, because I know I'm finding the perimeter, I use this formula. For length, I'll use the 15, because what this is saying is essentially that 15 is the exact same as the length. It's like when you go to the store and they've got something, like say there's no tax, and say they've got a really sweet hat, okay, and you're like, I love that hat, okay? Say it's 20 bucks. The $20 bill is equal to the hat. You can substitute them $20 for that hat because that's what it's equal to. In this formula, that length is equal to 15. So therefore, in my formula, I'm going to bring it all down here, we got two, it still stays the same, times our length, which is 15. Plus sign, two, times our width, which we said is seven. Equals my perimeter. Now, I just step by step solve my equation. Two times 15 is 30, plus two times seven is 14, equals P. Add those two together, 44 equals my perimeter. Now. If they're a stickler for the rules, they'll say, what's the measurement? That's how all people who are sticklers sound, okay? What's the measurement? Are you measuring in feet or miles or universes? <laughs> Tell me that. 
Well, first off, you talk like a weirdo. Second off, we know it's inches. We know that whenever we multiply it, it's going to be still inches. Okay? 44 inches. That's the measure of that. So we found the perimeter using a formula. All right? Using that formula, we found the perimeter. Okay? Found what the distance is all the way around it. Let's say we want to find the area. Area is all the stuff inside there. Okay? You're going to see area whenever you talk about um, when you buy a house. They're going to say, well, how many square feet is the house, lovey? First off, you sound pretty cool like Mr. Hal. Gilligan's Island. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay? So, when you find the area, the square foot of your house, that's how wide it is. That, or not wide, but length and width. It's the total measurement of the inside of the house. Okay? So, you're finding how big it is. Not the measurement around it. Because you could have a, like, oh, it's the perimeter of our house is 200 feet. Well, it could be a straight line. You could just be walking through a hallway, okay? With area, you can see all that. Well, I guess it could still be the same thing. But area is better for square footage, okay? If you don't understand what I'm talking about, tell it to your mom, okay? Or your dad. I have no idea what they're talking about. All right. So the formula for area, as we're using formulas, it is length times width equals your area, okay? All I do is plug in what I have for length, which is 15 inches, times my width, which is 7 inches. All right. Now we just multiply. 7 times 15, which is 70, times 5, which is 105. And then when you do inches times inches, you do the little thing called inches squared. Because we don't know, we well, don't want to put in what an inch it is, we want to put inch squared, because it gives us our form of measurement. Equals area. First off, it's probably a pretty small backyard if that's what we're talking about. I like to think we're talking about a gold bar. <laughs> it's a flat gold bar. But that's it. So you found the area using formulas. Now, what I want to talk to you about is a little bit more advanced version of using formulas, okay? Before we, when we did the perimeter of a rectangle or the area of a rectangle, they gave us the length, they gave us the width, we plugged them in, we found our answer, okay? It's a standard math problem. Put in the numbers, find your answer. Now, what I want to look at is how to break down a formula when you're not given a perfect cookie cutter, you know, numbers and things and such of that. So, let's say we've got um, a formula that is um, 4x equals, ah, this is worse. Um, let's say we're doing a formula for area. Scratch what you just saw. I did not mess up. Call your mom, tell her, hey, he didn't mess up. She's going to be like, who's he? I'm going to be like, not me. <laughs> okay, so looking at this, let's do um, area equals length times width, okay? Now, let's say we want to find the, fit, the missing measure of this, okay? All right? On the ones we did earlier, the easier ones, we got the length, they gave us the length, they gave us the width, we found the answer, okay? We found A given L and W. Now, let's try it where we don't have something that sweet and nice. Let's say we know the area is um, 16. We know the length is 2. What's the width? I don't know. Fun fact, that's also what your face looks like if you don't pick a picture on Facebook. So, that's on you. Okay, so, here's my phrase. And if anyone tries to tell you this phrase and they use a certain tone of voice, well, they're stealing. That's copyright infringement, and identity theft is not a joke. I'm talking to you, Mom. My mom. She stole my name and gave it to me when I was born. Cool story. Okay, here's my phrase. Plug in what you know to find what you don't know. Okay, you gotta get sassy at the end. Let's try it again. Everybody together, you ready? Plug in what you know to find what you don't know. Don't know. What you don't know. Plug in what you know to find what you don't know. Keep everything in order. We're going down. Here we go. Plug in what we know. We know A is 16. Instead of A, I'm putting 16. What else do I know? L. Instead of L, I'm putting the number 2. Not a Z. It's 2. Okay? Miss McDonald, don't you correct how I write my 2. Okay? W, do we know it? No. That's our formula. Okay? Now, let's say... A lot of times when they do this, they're not just going to want you to do this. No! 
they're pretty high maintenance. They make you go a little further. What they want you to do is they want you to get that W by itself. Okay, so all we do to do that is we do our simple math. What's the opposite of 2 times W? We use division. So we divide our 2 to get rid of it. That cancels out. That's 8. That's W. I don't know if you've learned this yet because I think this comes before this in algebra. But if you have, that's what you do. If not, stop there. I gave you all the info you need. Okay? Good stuff. All right, now I want to look at an advanced version of using formulas, okay? As far as algebra 1 is concerned. All right? All right, I don't know why I did that. I'm just wiping the crap off my head and pointing to you. Sorry I said crap. Don't tell your teacher. Okay, so we're using formulas, okay? We're using I equals PRT, all right? This is a common formula you'll see it a lot in, in real life and in the classroom. I is your interest, P is your principal, R is your rate, T is your time, okay? This is something you can do to find out how much interest you're going to accrue or earn if you have a certain amount of money in the bank you make a certain percentage off that money over a certain amount of time. Um, a common thing is like a savings account or a CD. Um, not the like compact discs. Everybody bought a bunch for a really high price in like the mid 2000s and late 90s. Um, a CD is something that it's like a deposit that you can put money into a bank and you say, I'm going to keep this money in here. Let's say you have, you know, 10 grand. And you're like, I'm going to give the bank 10 grand and I'm going to keep it in there and I'm not going to get any of that money out for five years. At the end of the five years, they're going to give me a percentage of that money so you can actually make money by just not spending your money. Okay? It's weird. But banks like to have your money. That's why their buildings are so nice. I'm talking to you, banks. Okay. <clears throat> I'm talking to banks from Mighty Ducks. Remember him? He was really good at hockey. Okay. So, <clears throat> interest. This is the amount of money you're going to earn based on the principal, which is the amount of money you put into the account or put into the savings thing. Rate is how much you're making at, the percentage you're making off of what you put in, and then time is how long it's in there, in years, usually in years, okay? So, we're using formulas, we're going to use this formula. I've got some information here, what do I not have? T, that's correct. My T I don't have, that's what we got to find out. We want to find out how much time do we have to have our principal in there before we can earn this much money, okay? So let's find out. Remember my phrase? Plug in what you know to find what you don't know. People will be calling. Probably the president or my friend Nate. I'm not telling you which one. Okay? If you want to see videos of Nate and Tyler, go to tylertarver.com or just Google Nate and Tyler Tarver and you'll find it. Whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, here we go. So let's plug in our stuff. Plug in what you know to find what you don't know. What do we know? Principal. We know the rate. We know the interest. And we don't know the time. So plug in what you know to find what you don't know. Don't know. Okay. Interest. How much money do we not want to know how to earn? 42 bucks. Okay. Plug it in for I. Bring everything straight down. Bring down your equal sign. Bring down everything. That's how you do math. Okay. Principal. 350 bucks. Let's say I have 350 bucks. That's how much I can put into my account. I want to know how long do I have to keep 350 bucks in the bank's hands before they're going to give me 42 bucks for it. Let's find out. Rate, 6%. Now, you don't want to put 6% in. This is probably the most complicated part. You don't want to put 6% in. You want to turn that into a real number, a decimal, okay? To do that, you move the decimal over twice. The decimal's right here. We go 1, 2. That would be 0 0.06. So we multiply that by 0 0.06. And then we multiply it by our time, which is we don't know our time. So there we go. All right, so now we take out our calculators, which mine looks a lot like a cell phone because it is a cell phone. All right, we need to simplify this and get T by itself, okay? We've got to get this formula to where the T is by itself instead of the I being by itself so we know how much time we have to put this in here to have it, um, to find out, to find out how much <laughs> words, right? How much time do we have to put our 350 bucks in there at 6% interest to get 42 bucks out of it? Okay, let's find out. I'm going to do 350 times 0 0.06. It's 21 times T, okay? Times T, that's better. All right, now, last step, it's being multiplied, so to get rid of 21, I do the opposite, which is divide. That goes away, and then 42 divided by 21 is 2. So our time is 2 years. So we plugged in what we knew to find what we don't knew. 
don't know, okay? <clears throat> so, a good thing to do when you're working with formulas, sit back, <clears throat> look at your problem, and figure out what you just figured out, okay? So looking at this formula, I know that it's gonna take me two years, okay? Two years to do what? Well, it means if I have 350 bucks and I put it in the bank at 6% interest, I wanna know how long it's gonna take me to earn 42 bucks. I need $42 exactly to take out this hot chick from second period. What's up, girl? You know who you are, all right? To make that 42 bucks, I have to keep that in the bank for two years to get that, okay? So, that's pretty much it. That's how you do it. That's how you use formulas. Holla at your boy. Tyler Tarver, TylerTarver.com, at Tyler Tarver on stuff. Subscribe. Bye. Hello. Thank you for coming to Tarver Academy. Please, subscribe. Maybe...